So today we're not just reviewing another Challenger, but I'm gonna show you a 134 horsepower Challenger Dark Horse. This is a 2022. I'm gonna walk you through everything that I like about the bike, any cons that I see, and tell you what American Biker here did with this motorcycle. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, I do wanna thank these guys again at American Biker here in Latson, South Carolina. If you need anything new from Indian or a used Harley, Revacos, slingshots, whatever, come talk to Rob at American Biker. Again, big thanks to these guys for all their support. Now to the Challenger. So everything on the bike is pretty much the same that we've looked at in previous years. But just to recap, you have the seven inch touch screen, which has the ride command on it, a bunch of great features. You have adjustable ride modes, so you can go from sport, touring, or rain modes, which is always really nice. This one comes standard, with their technology package or their safety package, which has the six axis IMU, cornering ABS, regular ABS, and a host of other features for the safety aspect. You have the single Fox shock that's hydraulically adjustable in the rear. Of course, this thing is rocking Metzler Cruise Tech tires. And this one's pretty cool because it has those sporterized rims on it. And then it has the red stripe around the rim of the rim. You have a six gallon tank, so you're gonna get plenty of range. And one of my favorite features that Indian puts on their baggers is remote locking bags. So you literally just hit a button and your bags are locked. You don't have to get down there with a barrel key and all that kind of crap. You can just lock it right from your remote. You have an adjustable windshield, so you can take it as high as you want or as low as it will go. But you can also adjust the airflow through the vents in here as well. You got a little bit of storage right in there. Not much to speak of, but you do have one on both sides. You have power ports, USB, all that good stuff right there. Now, you, it does come with front crash bars. It comes with huge floorboards, so plenty of space there. No heel shifter, though. It's easy to add on, but so awesome on these big cruisers. So there's that. Now, on this specific model, you actually only have the pegs for the passenger. So they're nothing special like you get on the Elite Challenger that we uh, did a video on maybe six months ago or so. So not too great there. They don't have that premium look, but again, they can be upgraded. Now you have this slammed bagger look, which personally is my favorite type of look on any motorcycle because you get the functionality with the bags, the windshield, the fairing, all of that stuff. You get six and a half inch speakers on this. They're not great. None of them are great from the factory, but eh, they're six and a half inch speakers regardless. So you can listen to your music and you don't have it playing in your helmet. Some people like that. I'm not a fan. I'd rather hear it from my speakers themselves, but that's just me. But you get all of that. And then this bike stock with a 108, liquid cool by the way, is 122 horsepower. That's what Indian claims, right? Well, with the stage two, we're now at 134 horsepower. So what they did here at American Biker is they obviously have the high flow intake, exhaust, and then the stage two cams. And so that package is like $1,800 additional uh, through Indian. But I'm expecting some pretty amazing things with this bike because even 122 horsepower is pretty awesome out of these baggers. I mean, you know, years ago, you, we were talking about like 80 and like 70 horsepower on bikes that were just as heavy as these. So 122 horsepower, then to 134, that's the most impressive part about this motorcycle, even if it was just stock. So 831 pounds, full of fuel, and a 26.5 inch seat height. So that's one thing that Indian does really well is they're able to, to, to balance the bike where it doesn't feel like a full 800 and something pounds it is, so it hugs the road really nicely, but it doesn't feel like that off of the kickstand and you have that low seat height. So if you are a returning rider, but you know you want a bagger or whatever the case may be, or hell, you're just somebody that may be older or not comfortable with the idea of a bagger, you know that's what you want. This is a really confidence inspiring bike. Way more than Harley because Harley is, is so top heavy you feel all of that 800 some pounds on a Harley where you don't on Indian. Their engineers do a fantastic job of making sure that weight is balanced correctly. So now without further ado, it's time to get on this bike. We've talked about the Challenger a lot on my channel. It's awesome, LED headlights, LED turn signals, all that great stuff. 
everything that they've added, Brembo brakes, the whole package, but I wanna ride this thing. So let me put my helmet on and let's get going. Now this thing does sound incredibly well. This is these, uh, I think they're Thunderstroke uh, pipes. One thing you definitely want to familiarize yourself with on these bikes specifically is all of the gauges and everything. I mean, this is my current ride right now. We have TPMS sensors, of course. You have your voltage, you have uh, temperature. So uh, there's a lot to look at in this bike now somebody put it in rain mode let's put it in standard for now of course you got traction control and all that kind of stuff on there should be able to yeah there we go so responsive even with a gloved hand i love that one thing i love though how light it feels dude Oh wow, that throttle wakes up even in standard mode, holy moly, dude, I've said it and I'll say it again, the Challenger is one of those bikes that I would absolutely trade my road glide in for. If I was in a position to do that, the Challenger Elite specifically, that's that's my bike. I think that might be my next bike, or at least or one of these, the Dark Horse at least. Started out in fourth gear just to see what it's like. I can feel my sex shot like tugging every time I pull the every time I pull the throttle. I'm almost nervous to go into sport mode. I mean, it really wakes up the throttle in sport mode. From rain to standard, I thought you could tell a difference with a stock Challenger. This, you can really tell a difference. Nice and comfortable, upright position. I can adjust my windshield. Which is great, because the way it was all the way up, it's hard for me to see so the fact that I can adjust that based on my height uh, that's a that's a nice feature to have cruising man I like this thing dude I really like this thing dude these start man I want to say they started right at 28 but see What's cool is that you get all of the safety features in this motorcycle where if you're looking at a road glide, naturally, you probably are. If you're looking at one of these two bikes, plenty of passing power in this baby. Ah, if you're looking at a road glide along with this, then the road glide you pay an extra thousand no eleven hundred dollars now for the rdrs okay so but this comes standard with with those safety features that i was just talking about let's put this thing in neutral i wanted to see any of the other gauge i mean there's so much to look at we can do this back at the shop I, i'm just i'm just a fan of baggers dude I love all the versatility this offers and something like this gives you the horsepower as well. It's just, it's almost perfect. The only thing that can make this bike any better 
is to have that orange color. Now, I, I do like this. I forget what they call it. This is either the, the bronze something another or the charcoal. Damn, dude, I don't even know the color of this thing. Hey, let me, uh, let me help you out. That's a uh, bronze smoke, dude. It looks good where it's all blacked out, of course, and the color, the flat paint, but that orange is just sick, dude. I love the orange on these bikes. It has that rear cylinder deactivation. You can hear that kick on. It gets a little bit louder, but it does keep some of the heat from, from getting up on you. And of course, this being the Challenger, my handlebars are free of the fairing so i don't feel all that additional weight whenever i'm turning and maneuvering so that to me i've talked about it before on the road glide versus the street glide that is an advantage in my opinion what i like that indian does is they give you physical buttons and they give you a really nice responsive touchscreen. i want to say i reviewed my first one in probably 2018 they were not as responsive as they are now dude they've done a really nice upgrade to these screens over time of course ride command you get you know weather updates on the fly there's there's a lot that goes into this system that we haven't even touched on fourth gear So I'm gonna raise this up a little bit. Let's see what kind of difference I get now. Yeah, a lot less buffering on my helmet. So obviously we all know windshields work. It's nice being able to adjust that though as needed. Much better than the Chieftain, dude. As far as just the, the the smoothness of the ride, you know, maybe that Fox shock is in combination with just the the design of the fairing, but it's so much nicer, so much less buffeting on the on on me, the the, the rider. It's it's nice. We're sitting right at 3,800 RPMs. Not too bad. And of course, I can go up to six gear. Now we're right at 3,000 RPM. If I need to pass in six gear, I don't want to throw Miss Hexshot off the back, dude. This thing, it is, uh, it is sensitive and it is, uh, <laughs> it is alive, dude. Oh, this is enjoyable, dude. I don't know exactly what you would get on a dyno if it's 134 but it is way better than what it was as a stock Challenger. I can assure you of that. This is nice, dude. Mm. Again, big thanks to American Biker here in Charleston, South Carolina, man, for letting me come out and review this absolute monster. Yeah, again, if this uh, maybe coming in this new year or the year after, this may be what I go with. I mean, cause you gotta think, dude, if you're at 20, let's just say 28, right? With no, no add-ons. If you do the upgrade, the stage two, right? Then we're at 20, let's say 28. Now we're basically at 30. Um, oh man, and you, you pretty much you get most of what the elite has not everything there's some things on the elite i i would really like to have but oh people are going to start calling me an indian fanboy but i'm okay with that i love what they did here and they have this uh this brushed kind of not a not aluminum look but brushed titanium type of look you have a mixture of gloss and flat blacks 
the intake is nice and small top of the rocker covers and everything that's all just gloss it, it looks looks really good crazy how much I can feel that compared to the road glide and the road glide doesn't feel like a slouch like that 114 does not feel like a slouch at all but this feels way like something way different it's crazy how much how much a little bit of a of, a, of an upgrade can make and even stock these things are just more responsive dude more responsive and more horsepower for sure I'm trying to be careful not to throw her off the back because uh, we ain't got our sissy bar on this bike so every time I hit that throttle it's funny because I can feel her like pull on my jacket like like damn this ain't our this ain't our normal bike for sure that's funny so the Indian Challenger 2022 I can't wait to ride a 2023. I'm really excited to see if they've changed anything, but this bike specifically is wow. I mean, I, when I, I didn't even know it was in rain mode. So when it was in rain mode, I was on, I was like, oh yeah, there's some more power. Then I switched to normal mode and the thing jolted me back and I'm riding pretty conservative because Mrs. Headshot, there's no sissy bar. So every time I hit the throttle, I can feel her tug and I'm like, Okay, this is different. This is just different. So this bike is incredible, man. That's stage two for 1800 bucks. That's not nothing. That's some pretty serious coin, but I like the high flow uh, exhaust better. It's smaller. It just aesthetically looks better. The pipes, the end caps, I'm not a huge fan of those, but the way they sound really awesome. And those cams, there's just something special. And then I put it in sport mode, of course, and you know the throttle is so responsive in sport mode that's what i love about these bikes even a stock challenger you get almost at least two different bikes you know you get the rain in the in the standard and then you get the sport and it just wakes these things up adjustable windshield all of the things i've talked about in the past i really love the front end i almost like it now more than the road glide just because that cyclops look with the leds it just looks fantastic, dude. This thing is amazing. The stock seat for a stock seat is pretty good. Now, I didn't put serious miles on it. So, you know, how would it be after 100, 200 miles? I don't know. But, man, yeah, this, this, this bike, I think whenever I go to upgrade maybe a year or two or longer, I, the Challenger is really winning me over, dude. It feels so light. feels light off the kickstand. Miss Techshot, her input was important in this too, which is why I definitely wanted to have her on this because the Chieftain was so kind of just rough riding for both of us, this is way different. So the, the combination of the shock and the way they've set this bike up, absolutely incredible. 134 horsepower Challenger is what it lived up to be. If I had to grade this bike, we're at like a 9.9 out of 10. Seriously, dude, this thing is absolutely incredible. And I would absolutely trade my road glide for one of these right now if I could. So I'm serious, dude. This thing is awesome. Big thanks to you guys. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on Indian baggers, the, the Challenger specifically, the Challenger versus the road glide. If you want to see that video, I can make that happen as well. Big thanks to you guys. See you in the next one. And as always, hold the rubber side down.